with which you offer also is Brahman. Brahma Havihi, what is oblation that is offered also is Brahman. Brahma no, the fire in which the oblation is given also is Brahman. Brahmanahutam, the one who makes the offering also is Brahman. And Hutam, the whole action is Brahman. So when he sees all of this Brahmi transcends. Normally, what we see and what his eyes also see is a ladle in Arpanam or fire or Havihi, the material of offering. This is what everybody sees and maybe his eyes also see that. But his mind, he sees it as prana. 
So prana, prana, prana. That's what his mind says. So whatever his eyes, whatever data the eyes convey, whatever perception he has through his organs of perception, he transcends them. And his mind says, Brahman, Brahman, Brahman. So he's called Ativadi. So this Upanishad presents Ativaditvam. So it shows his conviction. What is meant by saying that he transcends everything in his speech means he has a conviction. This is all Brahman. And so Ativaditvam is presented here as the characteristic of a wise person. <coughs> The vision of the wise person. And the Siddhanin says that the real Ativaditvam is by virtue of the knowledge of Satyam, not by virtue of knowledge of Prana. So Purupakshi said that no, why not you say that Ativaditvam is the same, Satyan Ativadadi, so Satyam Ativade, Satyam Vaded. Why don't you say that? Maybe it is the Adesha. Injunction for speaking truth on the part of the Ativadi of the knower of Prana. Naidi Brumaha Shrutyartha Parityaga Prasanga. Because Shrutyartha, what the Shruti in fact wants to say, that you have to discard what the Shruti says. <coughs> Here also Shruti means the direct statement. So Satyena Ativadati. So therefore, Ativaditvam is Satyena, where Satya is a means. The knowledge of Satyam is a means of the Ativaditvam, transcending the speech. It's very clear that Ativaditvam, second Ativaditvam is by virtue of the knowledge of Satyam. And so, if you want to say that this is the injunction of speaking truth, First of all, even the truth also, Satyam means only Param Brahma. The primary meaning of the word Satyam is Avaditam, which means Param Brahma or Paramatma. If Satyam means the truth, the Vyavaharic truth, speaking, you know, there is only by implication. Because Satyam means Avaditam. And the truth that you speak in our day to day life can be called truth all right, but it cannot really stand the scrutiny of the, the, the definition of satyam, abhaditam. Nothing is absolute. So nobody can enjoin something which is implied meaning. That also is the point. Natra prana vijnani sankirana masti e shatuva ativadati yas satyane ativadati There is no sankirana or prana here. Na prana nati vadati, satya nati vadati. Prakaranato prana vijnanam sammandhyeta. We say that the prakarana or the topic of prana is going on, and therefore we may say that no, this ativaditum also is by virtue of knowledge of prana. You might perhaps say that. Tatra prakarana anurodena suti parichaktasat. But this ativaditum is satya nati vadati. The Shruti, that meaning we will have given in order to give importance to the Prakaranam context. <coughs> and that's not right because Shruti is stronger Pramanam than Prakaranam. Prakruta Vyavartyarthasya Tu Shabdhana Sangatche Sangatchate E Shruti Vai Ativadati The two always stated to give in to say this is a new topic. So, two is what? The prakruta vyavrutyata. So, what, is, what follows is different from what preceded. That's what the word two means. So, you, know, you have to neglect the meaning of that also. Satyam te vijignasatavyam. So, that's also two is a linga. Satyam te vijignasatavyam. It is a pratyatnantarakaranam. And so, satyam bhagasu satyam teva vijignyasitavyam. You have to make a narada, make a special effort to know satyam. What is that effort? So, knowledge is effort and so forth. So, this is an injunction 
of making an additional effort. So, prayatnantaram. Whatever effort has been made for the realization of prana. Over and above that, some effort needs to be made for the knowledge of satyam. Otherwise, if the knower of prana was ativadi, and that is the ultimate ativaditvam then, if ativaditvam or transcending speech by virtue of knowledge of prana was the ultimate goal, then no prayatna is required further. When you already reach the goal, what further effort is required? Nothing. But Upanishad keeps on saying, this further effort to know the truth, further effort to gain the knowledge, further effort to do the shravanam, further effort for the shraddha, further effort for the kruti. So, all these efforts are enjoined. That means that something more remains to be done. So, whatever a pranavit or a knower of prana has attained, something more remains to be done. So, pratnantaram, pratnantara karanam, arthantara vaksham suchayati. That an additional effort is to be made shows that this is a different entity from the one that preceded. Tasmat yatha ekaveda prasam sayam prapadayam ishtu maha brahmana yas chaturva vedan adhite. Giving an example, when the context prakaranam is what? Ekaveda prasam sayam. So the context is prasamsa or extolling the knowledge of a knower of one Veda. Ishatu Mahabrahmana Yas Chaturo Vedan Adhite. Somebody say this is a Mahabrahmana. It's a great scholar who knows all the four Vedas. Ishatu. So even though Prakranam is there of the Veda, but then this is a knower of four Vedas who is a different person. Iti ek vede bhya anta arthantara bhuta chatur veda prasasyade. So how the knower of the four vedas is extolled here with reference to the knowers of the one veda. Tadruk etad drashtabhyam. So even knowing is the same. Knowing one veda and knowing four veda. But that knowing is different. Just because knowing is there doesn't mean it is the same. In the previous case, it was knowing one Veda. Now, it is knowing four Vedas. So, also Ativaditvam is there. But formerly, Ativaditvam was by virtue of knowledge of Prana. Now, Ativaditvam is by virtue of knowledge of Satya. So, just because knowing is mentioned does not mean the same knowing. Similarly, just because Ativaditvam is mentioned does not mean the same Ativaditvam. That two Shabda shows that it's a different thing. <coughs> Naja Prashna Prativachana Rupaya Eva Arthandra Vaksha Bhavitabhyamidhi Niyamasti The Puru Pakshi pointed out the trend in this Upanishad this dialogue is Bhuyaf Prashna Prativachanam. That the student keeps on asking at every stage, is there something superior? Is there something superior? And the teacher keeps replying, yes, this is superior, this is superior. So that is how we understand that what follows is different from what preceded. Not only that, but what follows is superior to what preceded. But that is missing here. After prana, there is no question of bhuyastvam, superiority, nor is an answer that bhuma is superior to prana. If Bhupanishad intended to convey that bhuma is different from prana and superior to prana, it would have been very simple to, uh, you know, have, have a question answer in that. It's not there. But there is no rule that what follows is different from what precedes just because it is interrupted by the intervention of question and answer that only the topic changes, that's not a rule. For example, in case of the four Vedas and one Veda, 
There's no question and answer and still the knower of four Vedas is different and superior to the knower of one Veda. So it's not a rule that a question and answer has to come in between. And just because question and answer comes doesn't mean topic changes also. So Ekasyatmana Maitreya Bahusha Prashtatvat. So in the dialogue between Sri Jagnavalk and Maitreya, Bahusha at least one more than once Maitreya asks. First she says that what do I have to do with you? You tell me what makes you immortal. And then says I am pretty confused by what you are telling me. You know? So that's, but then even though the questions are asked, the topic is the same. So questions are there and topic does not change and question is not there and topic changes. So there is no rule that a question alone establishes the change of topic. So Prakuta Sammanda Asambhavakari Tattvat Arthandra Vakshaya When you want to say something new, then it is new because it is not connected to what is preceded. Because you cannot equate to what is preceded, that is then you say it is new. That is the criterion. The new or the different is one that cannot be equated to what followed. Therefore, Vagvava Namna Bhuyasi. The speech is different from Nama because speech cannot be equated to Nama. Therefore, it is different. Similarly, Bhuma cannot be equated to Prana. That is different. Not because there is a question and answer or something else. Then, what is the reason why the question and answer is missing? Tatra Pranantam Anushasanam Shrutva. Tushnim Bhutam Naradam. So the teacher saw that listening to the Anushasanam, the teaching word Prana, the student feels that now I have attained whatever needs to be attained. Tushnim Bhutam Naradam. Therefore, Narada from his standpoint did not see the need of knowing anything superior because he thought this is the Supreme. So it became necessary on the part of the teacher to draw away the student from his conclusion. The student says Narada came to the conclusion that the knowledge of prana is knowledge of Brahman. Meaning that that is what now has relieved me from all the grief. His criterion is what? Am I relieved from grief or not? Sukasiparam Tarayadu as we saw in Anubhuti Prakasha. Every time that the teacher says, the, the Granthakar has said that Nama is taught and Nama is realized by say Narada, but I am not free from grief. Then Vag is taught, realized by him, not still free from grief. So Prana is taught, he feels that I am free from grief. Therefore, he does not ask a question of anything superior to prana. But that conclusion was not right. Therefore, the teacher to dislodge him from that conclusion. To create in him a desire to know, that, that to con communicate there is something superior. Which you to know? This I want to know that. And so, Naradam Svayamava Samutkumar Vyatpadayati He makes him see Vyatpadayati, makes him enlightened. Yet prana vijnayana, vikar andhra vishayana, ativaditvam, anativaditvam eva tata. He narada, the ativaditvam that is accomplished as a result of the knowledge of prana is not really ativaditvam, is not real wisdom. So less ativadam is wisdom. So wisdom by the knowledge of prana is not the ultimate wisdom. Because prana is what? Vikara under the Vishayana. Prana is the modification because prana is created. Prana has an origin. And what is origin is also will have an end. So it is constantly changing. And there is mithya. So vikara anurtam. The knowledge of what is vikara changing and what is not what is mithya or unreal can never be satisfying. That is not real wisdom. It is in fact ignorance. 
And therefore, ye shatuva ativadati yas satyena ativadati iti. Therefore, Sayyid Sanat Kumara enlightens Narada. Saying that, well, real ativaditum, real wisdom is only when one knows the satyam. Alright. So, this ativaditum is different. It is ativaditvam by virtue of knowledge of satyam. But satyam is prana, suppose. Suppose the Upanishad uses the word satyam for prana, then what? It says, no, tatra satyam is param brahma uchyade. So the primary or immediate meaning of the word satyam is abhaditam, that which cannot be negated, that which is changeless, which ever remains the same. That that means which is not dependent upon time or place or condition. Anything that is dependent will change. If something is dependent upon time, it will change by change of time. Something is dependent upon place, will change by change of place. Something dependent upon condition, will change by change of condition. About that only will not change which is not dependent upon time, place or condition. That alone is called Satyam in the primary sense. So Satyam is Param Brahma Uchyade. It is Param Brahma. Paramartha Rupatvat. Because Satyam must be Paramartha, must be absolute. And Param Brahma is absolute. That was Satyam means Param Brahma. Also Satyam Jnana Manantam Brahma it is Sutyantarat. Taitri Upanishad clearly defines Brahman as Satyam. Equates Satyam and Brahma. <coughs> so then Narada realized that hey, there is something more to be known. I was, you know, I was uh, confused, I was I was deluded in thinking that knowledge, knowledge of prana is ultimate knowledge. Tathavat Paditaya Naradaya. So Narada has been thus made to see, understand, enlighten. Then I this created what? Now a desire now. Because says Narada is a, a jignasu, mumakshu. The only agenda says Narada has is freedom from grief. Which is how moksha is described in that Upanishad. Moksha is described differently. One definition is freedom from grief. To realize that knowledge of prana does not make me free from grief, then what is it? So, Soham Bhagava Satyena Ativadani Di. Oh, Venerable Sir, I want to become wise or Ativadi by virtue of knowledge of Satyam. Even Prabhuttaya, that's how says Narada responded. Vignasu, now is ready to know. See, no point in giving instruction to somebody who is not ready to know or does not see the need to know. That is why they say that na prushta kasyachit bhruyat. Do not volunteer this teaching unless it is asked for means unless somebody sees a need for that knowledge, not even asks. Nachanyayana pruchyatah. Somebody can ask too without a real need for knowledge, then also you should not say. When you see that this person is in need of knowledge, value of knowledge, he sees the purpose of knowledge, then alone you should tell them. So when Narada then became that, one who saw the purpose of knowledge, there was a need of knowledge, he wanted to know, it was very important for him, there was a craving for knowledge. Then Vijnanadi, Sadhana Paramparaya, Bhumanam, Upadishati. Then Vijnanam, and then Mananam, and then Shravanam, and then Shraddha, etc. So Paramparaya, there's a whole sequence of the Sadhanam is, is told. Bhumanam Upadeshati, Yovai Bhuma Tatsukham. So after the Sadhanam, the Upadesha of Bhuma comes. Upadesha of Bhuma did not come right away. Upadesha of other entities came right away because I did not need any particular sadhana other than what Narada already had. See, Narada only was equipped for the kind of meditations that was required in previous cases. 
But equipment of preparedness required for knowledge of Satyam is the different kind of preparedness required for meditation. So those things are achieved by meditation. This is achieved by Vigna. So, Yesu Ativadati, Yes Satyan Ativadati. So one, so Satya. Yes, how is Vijanadi? Atha Satyam Vadati. So, Ativadi becomes only when he knows Satyam. So, this is a different kind of sadhanam than what was required for the meditation upon the earlier entities. <coughs> there were Sarat Kumara instructs about the specific sadhanam or the means required for knowledge of Satyam. In case of Prana, you become Ativadi by meditating upon Prana. Here, Yadava Vijanati Atha Satyam Vadati. In case of Satyam, you become Ativadi by knowledge of Satyam. Never Aparam Chet Praptavyam, Param Chet Nyatavyam. Up to Prana is Aparam Chet. Aparam Brahma, there were Praptavyam. Param Chet Nyatavyam. Param Brahma is to be known. <coughs> Therefore, a Sadhana Parampara. The knowledge is a sadhana here. For that, vijnat, so nididhyasanam is sadhanam. For that, mananam is sadhanam. For that, shravana is sadhanam. For that, shraddha is sadhanam, etc. Then the question is, why Bhuma? Why not Brahma? Why not Satyam? Why does the Upanishad use the word Bhuma? That's another question. So, so many questions are here. That's why this is taken up. Tatta pranat adi satyam vaktavyam pradignatam ya satyena ativadati He is a real wise person who has the knowledge of satyam which means in a way it's by saying that says Sanat Kumar has promised now I am going to teach you what satyam is pradignatam. And that alone is Bhuma, this is what we conclude here. <coughs> because word Bhuma also means the same as Satyam. So Bhuma also is Bahutva. And so Satyam Brahma, Bhuma Padokta, Bahutva Dharma Iti. So Bhuma means Bahutva, abundance, vastness. Vastness, abundance, infinite, infinity. And those are the characteristics which are the characteristics of Satyam or Brahman. Therefore, even though the word is Bhuman, it means the same as Brahman. <coughs> Tasma dasti pranat adi bhumna upadeshaiti. The is proven that. Upadesha Bhuman is as that which is superior to Prana. Atah Pranadanya Paramatma Bhuma Bhavitum Arhati. Therefore, Bhuma is Paramatma, different and superior to, and therefore different from Prana. <coughs> so, this is the uh, Avantara Prakarana. Then, Mahaprakarana. Look at Ratna Prabha, the line fifth on the bottom. Kincha sannhitadapi vyavahitam sakanksham baliyahiti nyayana. See, all along the argument is that what immediately preceded was prana. Therefore, the prakranam is about prana. Therefore, that prana in fact dictates what is taught later on. But oh, by all these arguments, it is established that prana does not dictate at what fall. It is wisdom that dictates, ativaditvam that dictates and not prana. And ativaditvam by virtue of knowledge of satyam is different. Therefore, yeah, satyam is different. And secondly, it then says, so that proximity is a very, that's called prakranam. 
the proximity or prakrutatvam which is under discussion is a very important you know criterion for determining what what is taught or what follows therefore all this long discussion was required that even though prana immediately preceded bhuma or satyam satyam is different from prana <clears throat> then says here sanhitadapi vyavahitam sahakaanksham baliyah even if something is proximate is not necessarily more powerful than something which is remote normally what is proximate is more influential than what is remote that's the usual rule but sometimes what is remote can be more influential than what is proximate if the remote is some remote control so say sakanksham akanksha see akanksha means what a sentence is not complete without a given word you require a given word to complete the sense of a sentence so akanksha or sense of a whole passage sense of a whole text in this case so prana is already taught and whatever is we taught about prana has already been taught there for prana does not have any akanksha to fill up something nothing is incomplete but the introduction was with atma so am bhagavad shochami tan ma bhagavan shokasya param tarayatu i such as that is grieving so venerable sir may please enable me to cross the ocean of grief shutam hevame bhagavad rishebhya tarati shokam atmavit and i have heard from venerable sages like you that the knower of the self crosses the grief so self is the primary subject matter the self will dictate the whole thing the main topic will always dictate the entire dialogue directly or indirectly so the atma is sitting there is watching whether am i now being considered am i now being given justification or not is nama and vak and mana and sankalpa and chitta is okay when am i coming in prana to all this point atma still remains sakanksha atma feels that i am still there is incomplete the sense is not yet complete so therefore that saka vyavahitam sakanksham even though introduction of atma is something remote but that atma is an expectation of the knowledge or the instruction so that the freedom from grief happens so ultimately what is the akanksha here what is the expectation that there should be freedom from grief and why how would that happen atmavit it is by knowledge of satyam atma that the freedom from grief happens there is not that happen so akanksha is that when will the freedom come when will the freedom come so that is why the anubhuti prakash you know the author kept saying at every step say narada now says am i free from grief by knowing nama no by knowing speech no so that's the expectation or you know akanksha is an expectancy that what is expected is freedom from grief if there is not happened that means there is something remains incomplete the sense of the whole teaching is not complete and there were the atma which was introduced right in the beginning which is quite remote from bhuma still is waiting for its fulfillment and that it will dictate the dialogue so sakanksham vyavahitam baliyah because it is nyayana sannitam nirakanksham pranam drushtva no prana has no akanksha because what have we known about prana and what are the result of prana ativadatam is already stated so meditation also is stated the phalam also is stated so now nothing remains to be stated with reference to prana so is nirakanksha 
But our Atma, something remains to be stated because still the freedom from grief is not there. Vakyopakramastha Atma Svapratipadanaya Bhumavakya Apekshahayati And so Atma, that was introduced right in the beginning. Vakyopak, the whole thing is called Vakya. That whole text is called Vakya. Upakrama is the beginning, introduction. So Atma that was introduced in the beginning of this whole dialogue is still waiting for its fulfillment. And so, Vakya Pekshahya Bhuma Grahya So Svapatipadanaya Bhuma Vakya Pekshahya So for Patipadana, for the teaching about Atma, its own self, Atma is now expecting and waiting for the teaching of that which will become make a person free from grief. So what will make a person free from grief? Happiness. When you are happy at that time, you are free from grief. If you are happy for a limited time, you are free from grief for a limited time. If you are happy forever, you are free from grief forever. So basically, what makes you free from grief is happiness. It is that Bhuma is happiness. And Bhuma is Atma, therefore, the knowledge of Atma becomes relevant. Really, what is relevant is only happiness. Since happiness only is, it resides in Atma, therefore, Atma becomes important. Otherwise, nobody would bother about Atma. Really. Or Ishwara or Brahman, nobody would bother. The only thing relevant to us is happiness. And Bhagavan happens to be happiness. Therefore, he becomes important. He is Krishna, Sadananda. Therefore, he is important. Otherwise, nobody will bother about him. So many great people have come and gone. Nobody bother him. Historically, it's okay. You may take some interest in but only, you know, casual interest. Why Krishna? Of all the people, so many great people came before him and after him also. But he is Sadananda. So that's what matters. So Atma means Ananda only. If happiness, if the knowledge of Atma makes you free from grief, then Atma must be happiness. And Bhuma is happiness. So Atma is waiting for the instruction. When will it come? So Bhuma Vakya Pekshariya Bhuma Grahya and therefore, ever Atma is Bhuma here. <clears throat> so, Vashakara Zayvam Cha here. Or says Nyayanirana Paratma Bhuma Yatra Mahaprakram Anugrahita Meti Hitvantarma Mahaprakram. The whole entire context, the primary context is the knowledge of the self. Anugrahitam. And that becomes now anukulam, favorable. Therefore, that's another hetu. Another reason why Bhuma is Paramatma is because that interpretation has the concurrence with what was introduced in the beginning, namely Atma or Paramatma. So Paramatma was the topic that was introduced in the beginning and that becomes also anukulam, favorable or compatible when Bhuma is taught to be happiness. <clears throat> so Vashyakara is evam chahidi. So on the page 215, the line fourth on the bottom, evam chahidi ha atma vivdishaya prakranasya uthanam Upapannam bhavishyade prana eva atma vivakshita hai iti etadapi nopapadyate nahi pranasya mukshya vritya atmatma maste Even only if this is so, what is so? That only when Bhuma is Paramatma, then only. 
the introduction of this whole dialogue with Paramatma would be sensible, would make sense. If Bhuma is Paramatma, otherwise where will that Paramatma is introduced? He never comes. So you start, you know, big deal. That now I'm going to talk about self-knowledge. And then self never came in, knowledge never came. Suppose in the whole dialogue, so what's the point? Similarly also, we started with the knowledge of the self. If it never comes, then introducing the whole dialogue with Atma or Paramatma would become meaningless. Even say, Atma Vivudishaya. So, Sayyid Narada said that I want to know the self because I want to become free from grief. No, knower of self becomes free from grief. That means I, and I want to become free from grief. So, I want to know the self. So, in those words, says Narada express Vividisha or desire to know the self. So, Atma Vividisha Prakrasya Uttayam. The whole prakrana, the whole dialogue was initiated with the desire to know the self. And if the discussion of ourselves does not come, then the desire remains incomplete. Then it would not make sense to begin the whole dialogue with the desire to know the self when that desire is not fulfilled. Then you will interpret that in a different way. So, Prakanduthanam Upapannam Bhavishyati, it would be tenable, it would be in keeping with reason that the interaction of the whole dialogue took place with the desire to know the self and that Bhuma is the self. Then only that desire to know becomes complete, becomes satisfied. Yattu prana vishetvam atma shabda syuktam tad anudya dushayati says no, no, prana alone is atma. That's what Purupakshi say. Why? So say prana is sarvatma, prana pita, prana mata, say, you know, prana ha pita, prana mata, prana bhrata, prana svasa, etc. So Puru Pakshi said that here, look, this, in, this Upanishad presents prana as the self of all. So prana is atma. So therefore it is replied here. Pranayva, Atma, Vakshati, it will be no Upadhyata. That also is not tenable. That this, in, this Upanishad presents Prana as the Atma or the Self of all in a primary sense. That also, it is all Arthavada. Arthavada for the meditation, enjoining the meditation of one Prana. So Prana is extolled as the Self of all. Extolled as the very substrate of the universe. <coughs> But pranayava yatma vaksati it will be no upapadyate. Upapadyate meaning is not, not in keeping with the reason that the prana is meant to be atma here. <coughs> Why? Shuk nivritti vakyam ehiti uktam. Iha. So pranayava iha atma vaksata. It yeah, means that Tarati Shokam Atma with there it very clearly says that knower of Atma becomes free from grief, not knower of Prana. Therefore, Prana cannot be Atma. Nai Pranasya Mukhya Vritya Atma Tvamasti. Even though the Upanita said Prana Hapita, Prana Mata, etc., etc., it is not said in the primary sense, said only in the secondary sense. To extol the prana. <coughs> Says Ratna Brahma, Kincha Shoka Sipara Dupa Kramya, Tamasta Para Medupa Samhara, Shoka Se, Mulo Chedam Vina, Tarn Ayoga. And he's jumping the gun here. But anyway, so uh, we will come to that for a little later. <clears throat> so, 
सो मुख्य वृत्तिया आत्मस्व प्राण से नास्ते प्राणा इज नॉट आत्मा इन द प्राइमरी सेंस प्राण इज वाइटल एयर इज नॉट आत्मा इन द प्राइमरी सेंस सेंस विशिष्ट फल दृष्टि है अभी परात्मा एव आत्म शब्दार्थ न प्राण विशिष्ट फल दृष्टि द नॉलेज ऑफ प्राण लीड्स यू टू सम रिजल्ट नॉलेज ऑफ आत्मा लीड्स यू टू अ डिफरेंट रिजल्ट द नॉलेज ऑफ आत्मा यील्ड्स एन आउटकम दैट इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द नॉलेज ऑफ प्राण देफर आत्मा एंड प्राण आर डिफरेंट इफ द रिजल्ट इज द सेम If by knowing prana, what you attain is the same as what you attain by knowing atma, then you can say prana is atma. But you attain something different by knowing atma, which you do not attain by knowing prana. Therefore, atma is different from prana. <coughs> so Vashyakara says, "Na cha hi, na cha anyatra." परमात्म ज्ञानाद शोक निवृत्ति अस्ति नान्य पंथा विद्यते नाय श्रुत्यंतरा परमात्म ज्ञानाद अन्यत्र शोक निवृत्ति अस्ति अस्ती नॉट बी शोक निवृत्ति सीसेशन फ्रॉम ग्रीव परमात्म ज्ञाना अन्यत्र अदर देन बाय मींस अदर देन द नॉलेज ऑफ परमात्मा देर कैनॉट बी फ्रीडम फ्रॉम ग्रीफ हाउ डू यू सी दैट नान्य पंथा विद्यते अयनाय अयन मींस व्हाट द डेस्टिनेशन हियर देयर इज मोक्ष व्हिच इज व्हाट द फ्रीडम फ्रॉम ग्रीफ नान्य पंथ विद्यते अयनाय तमे विदिवा अति मृत्यु नान्य पंथ विद्यते अयनाय द होल सेंटेंस इज लाइक दिस तमे विदिवा अति मृत्यु तमे विदिवा मृत्यु मच्चे ओनली बाय नोइंग द आत्मा दट वन ट्रांसेंड द डेथ सो मृत्यु मीन्स डेथ और ग्रीफ सो वन ट्रांसेंड्स डेथ वन ट्रांसेंड्स ग्रीफ ओनली बाय नोइंग दर आत्मा नान्य पंथ अयनाय विद्यते देर इज नो अदर पाथ नॉट दैट नोइंग प्राण ऑल्सो यू कैन बिकम एंड नोइंग दिस ऑल्सो यू कैन सपोज देर आर डिफरेंट ऑल्टरनेट अवेलेबल यू कैन नो दिस देन ऑल्सो बिकम फ्री फ्रॉम ग्रीफ नोइंग दैट ऑल्सो बिकम फ्री देन यू कैन से दैर डिफरेंट पाथ फॉर अचीविंग दैट गो ओनली वन पाथ वॉट इज इट तमे विदिवा मृत्यु में तमे विदिवा नोइंग दट आत्मा लो विदिवा एव नोइंग अलोन मृत्यु मत्येटली ट्रांसेंड डेथ और ट्रांसेंड ग्रीफ नान्य पंथ विद्यते अयनाय फॉर दैट फॉर दैट डेस्टिनेशन और गो दैट इज नो अदर पास सो अदर देन परमात्म ज्ञानम दर इज नो शोक निवृत्ति एंड शोक निवृत्ति इज अ प्राइमरी पर्पज ऑफ दिस होल टीचिंग एंड सो That cannot be by knowledge of prana. Therefore, prana cannot be bhuma or paramatma. <coughs> prana cannot be atma. Then says the pure pakshi, na na chaitra mukhyam shogataranam kintu aupachari kamedi. So why not? When say Narada says, I want to free become free from grief, he doesn't mean in a primary sense. So. This Upanishad, the the agenda of teaching of the prayojanam is what shok and nivrutti. So he says that prayojanam is not in a primary sense. Aupachari kam, the freedom of grief is not the absolute freedom. It is relative freedom. That is what is meant here. Iti asan kya upakrao vasamhara. एक रूपया एक रूपया मायामेति सेस नो मेन शोक निवृत्ति इज देयर बिकॉज़ इन उपक्रम युडप संहार इन बोथ द प्लेसेस शोक निवृत्ति कम्स बाय द सेल्फ नॉलेज 
Therefore, that is the so upakramopa samharo. That's the lingam tatpara nirnaya. So that's how the tatpara nirnaya is done. <coughs> so therefore, says Bhashyagara, Tamma Bhagavan Sukasya Param Tarayadu Idicha Upakramya Upasam Harade Tasme Mrudita Kashayaya Tamasa Param Darshayade Bhagavan Sanat Kumaraha Idi Tamahiti Shukadi Karnam Avidya Uchade Tamma Bhagavan Shukas Separam Taradit Upakramya Upakrama, the introduction is May the Venerable Sir make me cross this, take me on this other end of the cross, I mean of the grief. So make me cross the ocean of grief. That's how the introduction is. Upasamharati. Then what's the Upasamara conclusion? Tasme mrudhi kashayaya tamasaf param dashayadi bhagavan sanat kumarayati. So this chapter will conclude with this sentence. Tasme so mrudhi kashayaya. Ahara Shuddha, Sattva Shuddhi, Sattva Shuddha, Dhruva Smriti, Smriti Lambhe, Sarag Granthina, Vimokshaha, Tasmai, Mrudhita Kashaya, Tamasaf Param Dashaydi, Bhagavan Sanat Kumaraha. Last sentence. Skanda Iti Aachakshate, Tam Skanda Iti Aachakshate. All right. Sanat Kumar is called Skanda or Kartikeya. So he is supposed to be the incarnation of Kartikeya. That we will see. But in the last sentence, and so tasme mrudhita kashaya, mrudhita kashayaya, kashaya means impurity. So to say is Narada, who has removed all impurities, who is pure in heart, the teaching can only go through or make an impact when the student has become purified in the heart. Mrudhita kashayaya, because it was said, Ahar Shuddha, Sattva Shuddha, Sattva Shuddha, Dhruva Smriti. When your Ahar is pure, then the food is pure, then the mind is pure. And by the food is meant not only the food that goes to the mouth, but the food that goes through all the sense organs and everything. Whatever input is there, if all of that is pure, then the mind will remain pure. Then, Sruti Lambe Sarva Granthina Vimoksha Sattva Shuddha Dhruva Smriti Then only the Smriti comes or knowledge comes. Tasmai Mridhi Kashayaya Tamasa Param Darshayari Bhagavan Sant Kumara So what was the uh, introduction? Tanma Bhagavan Shokasya Param Tarayatu Introduction End is what? Tamasa Param Darshayati Bhagavan Sant so in the beginning the word shoka is used and then tama is used. So Bhashyakara to clarify, tama iti shoka adhikaram avidya uchyate. So tamasa param. But then Sanat Kumara had promised to lead Narada to the other shore of the grief and now he leads Narada to the other shore of ignorance. So this seems to be different. He says no, ignorance is the cause of grief. So say Jnaya Nirnaya, Upakrame Shukasya Upasamhare, Upakrame Shukasya Upasamhare, Tamaso Nivrutti Vachanat, Vipratipatti Mahasankya. Wait a minute. Upakrame in the introduction, the promise was to lead him to the other shore of grief. And the conclusion is, he was led to the other shore of darkness, Tamas. So looks like two different things. Vipratipati, there is no consistency here between Upakram and Upasamhara. So, Vashyakari, Tamahiti, Shuka Adhikaram, Abhidya Vichade. So, by the word Tamas is meant ignorance, which is the cause of Shuka Adhi, grief, etc. 
need not say etc. But anyway, shukani. So kama, krodha, etc. All of this stuff is the product of ignorance. So see, jnana, jnana, kāra nivṛtya, kāra nivṛtti, upasamhāre. Upasamhāra says that the tamas is removed. That is kāraṇam. So kārya is what? Shoka. So naturally when kāraṇam goes away, the kārya goes away. Kārya nivṛtya, kāraṇa nivṛtti upakrame. Upakrame was that the shoka is not there, which means kāraṇam should not be there. The kārya cannot be there only when kāraṇam is not there. That's what he said in the introduction. When kāraṇam is not there, kāryam cannot be there, he said in the upasana, conclusion. So it's the same thing. So therefore in one case, kārya is mentioned, freedom of kārya is mentioned. That shows that the freedom of kāraṇam is already there, otherwise there cannot be freedom of kārya. The last says, the conclusion, freedom of kāraṇam, which means kārya cannot stand when kāraṇam is not there. So both of them are the same. There is no vipratipatti. There is no contradiction here. <clears throat> so now, uh, then say it again, Nyaya Nira, Kinja Pranaha, Yadayat, Tas Sedam Prakramiti, Atmaya Prakrani, Bhuma Itiyaha. Kinja Pranaha, Yadayat, Prana also is dependent upon something. So the conclusion says prana also is not independent. Prana also is ayatta dependent upon something. And there were kincha prana yat ayatta. Whatever it is upon which the prana depends for its existence. Na pranena, na panena, martyo bhoti kasyana, you know. So nobody survives by pranayapana. It is because of something here that pranayapana function. So pranayadayatta sedam prakranam. So prana is a dependent entity. It is a limited entity. This prakranam or this, the, this dialogue or the teaching cannot be about prana because prana is again dependent upon something which is prana as its origin, which prana is limited. And by knowing something limited, that you cannot become free from grief. Therefore, the, the teaching must be about something which is independent, which is a very locus of prana. So that is Atma. So that's what Bhastikara says. Pranante cha anushasane na pranasya Anyayatata Kuchida Atmata Pranaha Idicha Brahmanam Pranante Janushasana. If the instruction with reference to was only to end with the prana, if prana was the ultimate entity, is what was meant here. If Sanat Kumara meant that prana is the ultimate entity, so pranante anushasana. Anushasana, the teaching had to conclude with prana, then prana would be the primary topic, then na pranasya anyayatata ucceda, then Sanat Kumara would not have said that prana is dependent upon something else. If prana was intended as the supreme entity taught in the Supanishad, then prana would not be presented as a dependent entity. What is dependent cannot be supreme. Atmata prana, it is a Brahmanam. Brahmanam is Sandogya Upanishad. So, Atmata prana, there is a mantra and there is Brahmanam. So, now and then some mantra is quoted, but it is all a Brahmana section. So, Atmata prana, it is that prana is the product of atma. So prana is born of atma. So prana is what? Not, a, not an independent entity. The effect always depends upon cause. Atma is the cause. Prana is the effect. Therefore prana is atma yatta. So see, now you go to Ratna Brahma. Kincha shokasya pāyamadu pakramya 
तमस पाद उपसंहाराद उपक्रमे शोक से पारम उपसमय तमस पारम शोक से मूल उच्छेद बिना तरण अयोग शोक इस कार्य ग्रीफ इज इन इफेक्ट और कार्य वी शुड नो दैट कार्य कैनोट गो अनलेस कारण गोज डोंट गेट एंग्री नो पॉइंट इन सेइंग डोंट गेट एंग्री बिकॉज एंगर इज इन इफेक्ट अनलेस द कॉज गोज the effect will not go so i just no point in giving this kind of instruction if the fellow cannot follow don't get angry but i'm not getting angry anger gets me so therefore you have to get rid of the cause that makes me angry similarly don't grieve come on mass future so what so you tell me mass future doesn't mean i'm not grieving grief takes over me so only when the cause of the grief goes away then the grief will go not otherwise therefore mulo chedam vina taran ayogach nobody can cross the grief on this mulo chedan the mula or the, the very cause is removed then only the effect of the form of grief will go shok padena mula tamo grushate so when say narada says that please enable me to go to reach the other end of the other end of the shore other shore of the grief it means that please remove the cause of grief <clears throat> so shok padena multama grushyate so even though the word shoka is used at the beginning since the shoka cannot go unless the cause of shoka goes we should understand that by shoka is meant ignorance which is the cause of shoka so please make me cross the ocean of ignorance please stay enable me to reach the other shore of ignorance that's what narada means <clears throat> whether he meant or not that's what it should mean so he knows of course tar the shokam atma vit that knower of the atma crosses the grief so he knows there is ignorance of atma that causes grief so that when he says please enable me to reach the other shore of the grief he means that please remove the ignorance ignorance of atma तन निवर्तक ज्ञान गम्यत्वलिंग आत्मा ब्रह्म तन निवर्तक ज्ञान गम्यत्वलिंग सो मूलतम गृह्य तन निवर्तक मूलतमो निवर्तक वट इज ज्ञान सो नॉलेज इज द डिस्पेलर ऑफ इग्नरेंस जस्ट एज द लाइट डिस्पेल इन दार्कनेस सो ऑल्सो नॉलेज डिस्पेल इग्नरेंस so gam gyan gamyatva linga so from linga we understand that it is knowledge that is ultimately taught here and that is meant here so ashyakara na chanyatra paramatma gyanat shoka nivrut shoka adi shoka nivrutti so shoka vinivrutti cannot be other than the knowledge of paramatma <coughs> therefore even the introduction also is only on knowledge of paramatma the conclusion also is the same then says it now brahmanam atmaye tattvam pranasya vadadi sambandha that's the last sentence that we read that atmatah prana iti so in upanishad says prana is born of atma what it means atmaye tattvam pranasya vadadi atma dhinatvam that prana is atma dhina dependent upon atma is what that brahmana or upanishad says <clears throat> then see again that number one nanu idam charamam brahmanam brahma param astu all right that last passage may be brahma param meaning that that talks about brahman we accept tatah prakto bhuma prana iti but before that bhuma is not ultimate see the upanishad does not conclude with instruction of bhuma upanishad concludes with the instruction of the cessation of darkness or ignorance and of atma so upanishad concludes with the knowledge of atma so okay we accept atma means parmatma so nanu idam charamam brahmanam brahma paramastu the last brahmana may be devoted to revealing nature of brahman okay ततः प्रागुक्त भूमा बिफोर भूमा कम बिफोर दैट सो भूमा इज प्राण सो भाष्यकार प्रकरण 
प्रकरणांते परमात्मवक्षा भविष्य भूमा तो प्राण भूमा तो प्राण एव सो पूर्व पक्ष प्रकरण परमात्म पक्ष भविष्य ऑल राइट एट द एंड ऑफ प्रकरण दिस इज ऑल टॉकिंग अबाउट आत्मा यू सी इज सो गुड नेक्स्ट वन देन यू यू नो अर्लियर इट से सो सैव अधस्ता सौ परिष्ठा दर्शा एक्सेट्रा अथ आत्मा देश आत्मस्ता आत्म उपरिष्ठा एक्सेट्रा यू नो एंड देन सो दैट सौ दि इंस्ट्रक्शन कंक्लूड्स विद आत्मा एंड सो लेट इट बी द कंक्लूजन विद आत्मा but bhuma is earlier than that and that is prana says no so varshakara replies na sabhagavah kasmin pratishthita haite sve mahimne ityadina bhumna eva prakrana samapte he anukarshana so in the 24 so then said narada asked that we already saw sa bhagavah kasmin pratishthita hai ti yatra nanyat pasyadi nanyat shrunodi etc id alpam tan martyam sa bhagavah kasmin pratishthita hai ti he bhagwan where is that bhuma pratishthita where is have its being and then sve mahimni pratishthita Bhuma abides in its own glory. So that Saham is Bhuma. The thing is, so Bhuma comes later also. What Bhaskara says is that not only Bhuma came earlier, mention of Bhuma comes later on by the pronoun Saha. So Tat Shabdena Bhuma Bhuma Anukarshana Anukarshat Maevam. What is Tat Shabda? Saha Shabda. स भगव कस्मिन प्रतिष्ठित है सो वेन से नार सेज वो वेनरेबल सर वेर इज दैट वेर इज इट प्रतिष्ठा वेर इज इट अबाइड स्वे महिम ने दी अबाइड इन इज ओन ग्लोरी दैट इज टॉकिंग अबाउट भूमा दैट सह दैट प्रोनाउन रिफर्स टू भूमा भूम न सर्वनामना अनुकर्षण वाक्य शेष से भी तदर्थत्वा सो भूमा डिस्कशन भूमा कंटिन्यूस एंड देन वॉट फॉलोज ऑल्सो अबाउट भूमा ओनली बिकॉज सेव अदस्ता दैट सेम सेम स कम्स यू नो सेव अदस्ता उप स उपरिष्ठा पश्चात स पुरस्ता इन सेम भूमा इज नाउ कंटिन्यू सो इंस्ट्रक्शन भूमा इज नॉट स्टॉप्ड it continues all the way up to the end <clears throat> so bhum neva sarv namna anukarshana at tat shabdena bhum anukarshana you call it tat sat shabda by that sarv nama bhum alone is referred to and therefore vakya sheshasya bi tad arthatva therefore the remaining passage also is meant only to delineate the nature of bhuma तस्य वेद प्रकरण द होल प्रकरण द होल टीचिंग इज अबाउट भूमा बिकॉज इट कंक्लूड्स विद द इंस्ट्रक्शन अबाउट भूमा विच इज आत्मा न प्राण से भूमा तो देर फर प्राण इज नॉट भूमा सुभाषकर न स भगव कस्मिन प्रतिष्ठित यदि स्वे महिम नित्यादिना भूम न प्रकरण समाप्त है अनुकर्षण ऑल द वे सह सह कम्स एंड दैट रिफर्स टू भूमा सो दैट प्रकरण ऑल्सो कंक्लूड विद भूमा विच इज आत्मा किंच भूम रूपता भी प्राय न मुख्या फॉर दिस फर्दर रीजन ऑल्सो प्राण कैनॉट बी भूमा इन द रियल प्राइमरी साइंस वैपुल्य भाषेकार से 
वैपुल्यात्मिका चूमूपता सर्वकारण परमात्म सुतरा उपपद्य वैपुल्यात्मिका चूमूपता भूमय द्वार वैपुल्यात्मिका बंड वास्नस सो वास्नस विच भूम इन फैक्ट मीन्स सर्वकारणत्वा That vastness can be what only in the cause, not in the effect. Sarva karana tvat, because atma bhuma, the same as atma is presented as cause of everything. So that's why he say, you know, uh, atma. So atma eva dasta, duparista, etc., etc. Hmm. Atma ta asha, atma ta smara, atma ta akasha, atma ta teja. Atma is presented as the cause of all. Where prana or atma, that prana, prana is indicated as effect. Atma is indicated as cause. Cause alone is naturally vaster, more abundant, more pervasive than effect. So why pull, why pull the atma? Because bhuma rupata, the abundance or the vastness that the word bhuma implies. Sir, karna tvat. Atmana sutram upadyate that only fits in well with Atma because Atma is the cause of all as presented by this very Upanishad. Pranasya svikara peksha bhumatvebi na mukhyam iti vaktum. So prana also is vast with reference to the effects of prana, but prana is not vast enough with reference to own cause which is Atma. So prana also is, is vast, but not vast in the real sense. So sutra am no upadya the. So in a primary, in an absolute sense, it does not apply to prana. In a relative sense, it can apply. Not in the total sense, it can only apply to atma. Therefore, prana is not paramatma. Bhuma is paramatma. <clears throat> we'll take up the next uh, sutra also. Which is continuous on the same discussion, so that we'll take in the next class. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachade Purnasya Purnamada Ya Purnameva Vashishade Om Shanti 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 शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवतपुन ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योमद्याप्तहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ श्रीगुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ